with geoms upon us, obviously people are going to be looking even deeper into build crafting. One of the key items in GMs is how do you make sure that you can stay alive and keep your teammates alive? And how can you deal with ammo economy? Those are critical things, especially with some of the GMs this season being longer. The build I'm about to go over is going to deal with all that. It's going to allow you to proc devour constantly on your hunter, to go invisible, and make sure that you can get ammo for you and your fire team as well as make sure that you and your fire team can survive as long as possible. You're going to be able to control ads, get your super back as quickly as possible in one simple build. The other thing this build is going to give you is the ability to be flexible with your weapons and what you're doing within the game. And I'll go over that here in a second. First off, I'm going to go over some of the basics, class abilities, aspects, and fragments I'll be using for this build. This is also based on a build that I used earlier on the season, which Thanks guys, it has a ton of support from you guys, but basically it's how you use Void Point 3.0 to survive in any end game content. We're gonna be using Night Stalker Deadfall. You can obviously swap that out from time to time, but there's a primary reason I'm gonna be doing that, primarily because this build is going to be focused on ad control and staying alive. Now, with portions of the build, you could also use Morbius Quiver, and you can switch over to that from time to time, but that's what I'm probably get, primarily gonna use in most of the video you're gonna see. We're also gonna use Gambler's Dodge so we can get our smoke bam, bomb pretty quickly. We're also gonna use Void Wall because I think it, it really allows you to do a lot of area effect control and it regenerates quicker than other Void Grenades. We're gonna use Stylus Executioner. Kills with enemies that are suppressed, weakened, or volatile, makes you invisible and gives you true sight. And Trapper's Ambush allows you to use your smoke bomb on your glaive. So if you don't use this, and let's say you wanted to smoke yourself, well, you can't You do that with your glaive equipped. You'd have to switch it out. But with this, you'll be able to use the quick fall ability to still be able to become invisible with your smoke bomb. Also, this will allow you to make your allies invisible when necessary. So this is really the key component to the build. On top of this, I'm gonna add certain fragments that will make this even better. I'm gonna be using Echo of Persistence. Increased duration of all buffs. This is your invisible overshield and devour. Since we'll be using devour invisible quite a bit in this build, this will come in really handy. And with your invisible, this allows you to get 10 or 11 seconds with your invisible when you proc it, which is really gonna be helpful. And this is without something like Graviton Forfeit. Echo of Starvation, Orbs Grab Devour. We will be generating a lot of orbs of this build. And once you start proccing this, as long as you're killing ads, you're gonna get devour for pretty much almost the entire encounter. Again, as long as there are smaller ads, you can kill fairly quickly. Finally, I'm gonna use Echo Obscurity. This is one where finishers grant you visible, and this is one I hadn't used as much before, but because in this build, we're gonna be using finishers quite a bit, especially in your champions. This is gonna allow you, after you do the finisher, to become invisible again for a fairly long duration so you can get back into cover. So now let's talk about some of the armor mods that I'll be using. So first off, on the helmet, I'll be using Empowered Finisher. So this allows you when you finish an enemy to get a charge with light. I'm also gonna use Kinetic Siphon. This allows you to generate orbs when you use a kinetic weapon to get multi-kills. Now, you could use this depending on your weapon slowdown. You can also use the Harmonic Cipher, which would, in this case, allow you to do it based if you were using a void weapon to get multi-kills. Again, something you can do, but for the weapons I'm gonna describe in a minute, the Kinetic Siphon is going to be a key, and again, Generate orbs or getting orbs for your teammates are going to be a key component of this build. On the arms, I'm going to put whatever champion mods I need, and I'm also going to do taking charge. Again, taking charge allows you when you get an orb to become charged with light. On my chest, I'm going to use Thermoshock Plating. So, what this allows you to do is this gives you arc and solar resistance, and if you use this on a void piece of armor, which I'm doing in this case, you can also then put on void resistance as well. This will give you protection against all three burns, so no matter what GM you're doing, you will have complete protection. I'm also going to do, since it's a void piece of armor, stack on stacks. So stacks on stacks basically doubles the charge of light you get. So every time you pick up an orb or if you do a finisher to give charge of light, you're going to get two, which gives you a nice reserve that you'll become in handy here in the future. On my legs, I'm going to use inter Interversion, which when you pick up orbs, again, orbs are a big component of this build, you're going to get grenade cooldown reduction. I'm going to use two of these. So because the next mod will show you why I want grenades on a regular basis. This is a charge of light mod called Heal Thy Cells. Grenade kills heal you. Now where this comes in handy is let's say you're in an area of a bunch of mobs and let's say you're in trouble. You're damaged, you, you, you're stuck out in a bunch of ads and you can't get back in the cover. And you're, let's say you're in the middle of something like that. 
Well, if you put this grenade down, the grenade, especially like a void wall, if it kills a couple adds, you're going to start generating healing immediately. And I'll take a charge of light. Since you have two charges of light, because I have stacks on stacks, this will allow you potentially to use two grenades, if you get your grenade back quickly enough, to further your healing protection. On my class item, this is where the, the build really comes together. I'm gonna to use Suppressive Glaive. And if you are familiar with Suppressive Glaive, basically when you hit an enemy with a Glaive, you're going to suppress it for a period of time. Now, one of the reasons it changes to Glaives is that when to do this, you can't just sit there and spam hit someone with, a, with your non-powered melee. What you're gonna to have to do instead is you can do that, but you have to also, in addition, have charge on your glaive. And the way you do that for most glaives is to get hits with it. You will need to do that. And every time you suppress an enemy, that's going to take 10% of your charge. But again, if you're doing ammo economy well, and if you basically just make sure you're getting kills with a powered portion, you're going to have plenty of this to use. So while the suppressing glaive nerf hurt a little bit, it hasn't hurt that much. And when you suppress an enemy with suppressive glaive, the other thing is if you kill that enemy, with some of the abilities I talked about above, you will go invisible. So this allows you to go invisible quite a bit. The other thing I'm gonna to add to this is Lucent Finisher. If you finish a champion or a Lucent Light Bearer, you drop heavy ammo for you and your fire team. We've been using this for quite a few weeks on some of the raid activities, and it's coming really handy. For GMs, it's gonna be great. You're gonna basically, every time you finish a champion or light bearer, you're gonna get a heavy. But to do this, you're gonna to need to make sure that you have a survivable build. And that's how I built this build, completely around the survivability to be able to get that ammo. That ammo is going to be a key component in making sure that you can finish off heavier tier targets quickly because in GMs, the longer something big lives, the worse it is for you and your fire team. Outside of my normal high tier armor, the only other thing armor wise, I'm gonna use Orpheus Riggs. Where Orpheus Riggs comes in handy is when you're using Deadfall, when you tether with that long tether and pull everything in, when you kill those things, for every kill, you get super energy back. And this is going to be up to 50%. So this will allow you to get your tether back really quickly. Now, the other option is during the GM, you could decide as you get towards the boss to switch it up. Because if you go to Mobius Quiver, then you actually get an extra set of those three arrows from Mobius. That'll do a ton of damage to the boss. So again, this is something that gives you a ton of flexibility because sometimes in GMs, you're trying to be defensive and sometimes trying to burn down bosses or majors really, really quickly so you can advance. So weapons for this can be really, really flexible because obviously with GM, sometimes you're going to need barrier, you're going to need overload, you're going to need unstoppable. So it really depends. What I'm going to use primarily is on my kinetic slot, I'm going to use something that's going to be supportive of overload, which this season is auto rifles and SMGs. In this case, I'm using a duty bound. And I'm going to use that with my kinetic siphon to be able to get orbs on a frequent basis. So I'm going to use this as my ad clear weapon. Again, you could do something else, but this is what I'm gonna be doing on this build. For my energy slot, I'm gonna be using Edge of Concurrence, which is a new exotic glaive that came within Witch Queen. Now, these glaives aren't as great as we thought they would be, but where this one does come in handy is as you get kills and power up your glaive, if you do a long press, you're going to get a shot that will actually take arc lightning over period and will take out ads. And this is really good against small red bar ads. It'll take out quite a bit of them. And where that helps is, since you have Suppressing Glaive also, you'll be suppressing them, which means you'll also potentially be killing them when they're suppressed, or they'll be close to dead, which you can then kill them with your melee, which will allow you to go invisible. And again, just in general, it's gonna allow you to get some of that power back. And with the minimum amount of Glaive ammo, you'll be able to clear a lot of red bars and keep ad clear duties going well within the GM. This also allows me to utilize Arc so that I can balance out the burns across my build. So again, there's multiple different options. You could decide instead that you're going to use, let's say you're going to stick with a glaive, that you're going to use just the regular void glade, and maybe you're going to use something like Wither Horde on your kinetic. I mean, there's tons of options, but this is what I'm going to be doing because I actually like this exotic, and I think it pairs well for controlling ads and getting you the kills you need to regenerate your abilities. And then on my heavy, um, for the most part, again, because this allows me if I do solar, so I already have an arc on my energy, I have void abilities, if I have solar, then I get all the things within match game. I'm gonna be using a rocket launcher, something like Ascendancy, because again, I already have my exotic uh, slot taken. If you did something different, you could obviously use Galahorn or something like that, but Ascendancy works out pretty well. You're gonna be picking up quite a few orbs, so you'll get explosive light for the times that you use it. 
Explosive Light isn't a great buff, but it is a buff, and so that's why I'm using it, and it's worked out well in some of the gameplay that I've used so far. So for practical purposes, let's talk about how this is gonna work. You're gonna be using your kinetic to generate orbs. Those orbs are gonna allow you to proc devour and also are gonna allow you to get charges with light. Because you have stacks on stacks, you'll be getting multiple charges of light fairly easily. If you get in a jam, your grenade kills will actually allow you to heal yourself, which will allow you to get back in cover and survive longer than GM. When you do finishers, you're not only gonna get charge of light, you're gonna go invisible, but if you happen to do them on champions or light bearers, you're also gonna get heavy ammo for your team. So you can see the loop you're gonna go through. You're gonna do a lot of ad clear. You're gonna generate your abilities through that. You're gonna go invisible because you're gonna suppress enemies and be able to go invisible, go up to the champion light bearer, finish it off, which will allow you to give ammo for your, for your fire team and let you get charge of light again, and then get back because you're invisible back to the cover that you need to. So again, these synergize really well and allow you to stay as long as possible so you don't have to use those res tokens and to clear ads and keep your fire team safe throughout the activity. Also, because you're going invisible because of things like finishers and because you're suppressing things, you can save your smoke bomb to do that with your fire team later so you're not constantly having to smoke, so you don't need something like Aminoculus because you're not needing to generate your smoke bomb that often. You go invisible through a lot of other abilities. So as you can see, this is a multifaceted build that gives you a ton of flexible options, allows you to use any weapons that you want as long as they synergize well with the items that are in this build, allows you to survive as long as possible, but again, with that, allow you to have total flexibility in how you get around the battlefield, how you stay invisible, how you protect your fire team. This build is a little bit more complicated and that requires a little bit of effort and thought on how you plan things, which to be honest with you, playing a hunter, that's typically how things work in PVE because you're having to do that because you're really trying to figure out how to use your strong neutral game to stay alive and keep your fire team alive. But with the proper planning, this build is gonna allow you, again, to stay alive as long as possible, keep your fire team alive, be able to add clear and do a ton of damage and be able to finish all of those GMs. And I would say this is even something that you could use for trying to do solo GMs or solo masters or even solo high-end content because again, you'll be able to get Devour, you'll be able to go invisible, you'll be able to reload your heavy ammo whenever you want. And again, whether it's in team play or whether it's in solo play, this will allow you to get any of your end game PVE goals accomplished. That's the video guys. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.